The left is no longer working to convince those who disagree with their views. They're trying to destroy anyone who stands in their way. And that's not a pose. They clearly mean it. They are deadly sincere. This is total war to them. Just a year ago, for example, public figures didn't throw Nazi comparisons at their political opponents. On those rare occasions when they did, and it happened, the ADL scolded them and they apologized, rightly. It was considered too far. Now, it seems like every time you turn on cable news, there's some Democrat likening somebody he disagrees with to Hitler. Watch. This is the United States of Germ United States of America. It isn't Nazi Germany. Bottom line, Donald Trump increasingly looks like Hitler and Nazi Germany. <laughs> These look like D concentration Dave, camps. It's this is a policy that is inhumane. They are the tactics that have been used through, the, through history by the worst purveyors of pure evil, including slave traders, including Nazis, including terrorists. Well, Nazi references have become so common on the left that apparently there's now a search for even harsher comparisons. Nazis aren't far enough. Listen here as one radio anchor implies that anybody who supports border enforcement is likely giving aid and comfort to pedophiles. Watch. I'm just thinking, Stephanie, in terms of the logistics of taking care of these people. I'm, I'm so worried about how many pedophiles are now signing up to go and work in these places. Well, the anchor who said that, by the way, works for NPR, the official soundtrack of lifestyle liberalism in this country. When Subaru drivers in Cambridge or Marin County want guidance, they go to public radio. One famous liberal certainly feels that way. He was so upset watching the coverage of immigration policy on this show that earlier today he donated two and a half million dollars to NPR. Not that they needed that. Thanks in part to taxpayer subsidies, NPR is already the most overfunded news organization in the world. The rich get richer. Perfect. Notice what liberals aren't doing, what apparently has not occurred to them, no matter how outraged they've become this week. Spend money on American kids, and God knows those kids need it. 13 million American children are now growing up in poverty. Many of them live in conditions worse than the children you're seeing held by ICE. In the liberal-run cities across this country, public schools have collapsed. Learning has largely ceased to exist. Violence is rampant. Most of these kids are growing up in shattered families, of course. Marriage is almost non-existent in many of their neighborhoods. And for that reason, many will go on to prison, where they will likely be separated from their own children. It is a tragedy, and just because it's been going on for decades, and it has, doesn't make it less awful. It's awful. Liberals used to care about these kids, or they said they did anyway, but now they don't. They've abandoned them. The left's immigration policies make the lives of these children, American children, worse. Their schools can't cope with student bodies that don't speak English. No matter how hard they try, they can't. Jobs pay less because the left has imported a new surf class that will work for less than minimum wage. That helps them. It does not help the poor. Nobody in Santa Monica cares at all. But the left still claims they care about kids. For example, newly minted theologians Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi have been telling us that all week, sometimes while quoting the Bible to make that point. And yet the curious factor is these are the very same people who tirelessly promote unrestricted late-term abortion for any reason at all, including sex selection. Not an exaggeration. Look it up. And yet somehow they're for children. Huh. How exactly does that work? Interesting question. We called over to Planned Parenthood today to see if a spokeswoman would come on to explain it to us and speak slowly so we could understand. Unfortunately, they declined to come, but we're going to work on that and bring you the answer when we get it. In the meantime, we're joined tonight by Peter Kersnow. He sits on the U.S. Civil Rights Commission and is a frequent guest on this show. Peter, thanks for joining us tonight. Great to be with you again, Tucker. What, what's so striking about this, and I'm not just for the record, defending this or any other government policy, I'm merely fascinated by the focus, the attention, the priority that this has revealed, this story about family separation on the border on the American left. If you're worried about the plight of children, what about the 13 million American children who are living in poverty? Why have liberals given up on them, given up on their schools, given up on their job prospects? That's changed. Um, it's changed and it's been changing for quite some time and I think it's a function of the fact that for a long time, at least with respect to blacks in the inner city, liberals have taken the political clout and importance of blacks for granted to their electoral prospects. Forever, frankly, uh, 
liberals counted on 90% of the black vote. In fact, if they get less than 90% of the black vote, they can't win. And even when they get 90% of the black vote in three of the last five presidential elections, they haven't won. So they've had to look, look for a new block of voters, and they hope that by currying the favor of uh, immigrants, illegal immigrants coming over, somehow this will also curry the favor of Hispanic voters, and they have this new loyal voting block. It's not quite working out that way, but I think that's the impetus behind the attention on this and the abandonment of blacks. Why work for the black vote if you know you're going to get 90% of it? And if you look at the policies of Democrats over the last 30, 40 years, it hasn't done anything to improve the lot of blacks. In fact, it's mired blacks in poverty. You look at the crime rates. You look at, as you mentioned, the educational levels. All of their policies have either kept black progress static or there's been a regression. And in my neighborhood, I haven't seen CNN or MSNBC 24-7 as I have with respect to the alleged outrages at the border. And the important thing, the interesting thing here is, ironically, the issue of the day, immigration, if you take a look at the policy prescriptions of the Democrats and the left, those policy prescriptions actually have a linear correlation to many of the maladies and pathologies affecting the black community. 40% of the 18-point decline in the black employment rate over the years is attributable to illegal immigration and the competition that comes therefrom. That has family formation issues because people who aren't married aren't, or people who aren't employed are less likely to get married, also more My likely choice. to be incarcerated. And the, the interesting thing is this, when we're talking about family separation, this year alone, 4,500 black kids will be separated from their families because their mothers are going to be incarcerated, not for, on average, a few hours, like 30% yep. of the illegal immigrants on the border are being separated. That's not what we're hearing, of course. We think that's permanent separation. It's usually adjusted within a few hours. In contrast, the black kids are going to be separated from their mothers for several years. They may not know their mothers during their childhood at all, but again, I don't hear public policy being adjusted because of that. I don't hear no. hues and cries from the left on this. Because they don't care. They've got a new family now. Thank you. Peter Krishna, great to see you. Good to see you again, Tucker. Not even a decade ago, the top Senate Democrat, Chuck Schumer of New York, was speaking very differently on the question of immigration. Here's a flashback. Illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. Until the American people are convinced that we will stop future flows of illegal immigration, we will make no progress on dealing with the millions of illegal immigrants who are here now. People who enter the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. Something changed. It wasn't the nature of illegal immigration, which has stayed constant over the years. It was the electoral calculus of those in power, as you know. Chris Hahn is a radio show host. He once worked on Schumer staff, and he joins us tonight. Um, Chris, what is going on with the Nazi references? I thought that there was an agreement that all rational people bought into that this is not Nazi Germany. You may disagree with the policies of the other side, but that you shouldn't compare people to Hitler. And in the last three days, I've seen it over 20 times on television, all of them from the left. When did we decide it was okay to refer to fellow Americans as Nazis? I don't think we've decided that. I think people's yes, passions are inflared right now because we're seeing what's happening at the border, and it is very disturbing. Anybody who listened to that ProPublica uh, audio of what's going on with children crying for their mothers has to be ashamed of what's being done by the president of the United States to people seeking a better life for their children. Look, look, I, 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 I get it. I get it. it. I'm, wait, hold on. I, I get it. And there are a lot of things that I'm offended by. The fact that your boss, former boss Chuck Schumer, advocates for third-term abortion for sex selection and defends it, which he does, enrages me. But I'm not That's calling not him true. a Nazi. I'm not. It is true, actually. So, Planned Parenthood has an so, explicit so policy just, just, in correct favor correct of sex selection and abortion. Let me, let me, no, no, no. I'm not calling him a Nazi because I think because, that that destroys our public conversation. Yeah. Why, why would you make excuses for that? Well, let me start by addressing your abortion point. Roe v. Wade took the state out of abortion. It's a woman's choice. And people defend a woman's right to choose and not to have the state dictate them. 
What's happening at the border right now is being okay. done by the president to a group of people okay, but, in our name. But, but it's very but you're, different. You're missing, you're missing my point. Conflated. No, it's, uh, that's, that's actually, wrong. look, I don't want to have an abortion debate with you, but the point, here's how they're well, similar. We disagree. I think that lives are being taken, and I think it's immoral. But I'm not referring to the, the people in favor of that policy it. as Nazis, as Nazis, because I think right. things start to fall apart when you don't control and, your and emotions they're... sufficient to have a real rational conversation and yes. the left isn't even trying I and, and you're all your little water carriers in the media aren't even trying and they're nodding in their bovine Whoa. way Ooh, it's like the nazis what do you think is going to happen if we keep Look, talking like that honestly I, what do you think is going to happen i i agree I agree, but when people start saying people are supporting late-term abortions, no, they're not. They're supporting a woman's right to choose. What's happening right now is okay. the United States of America is taking people from their mother's arms. That is wrong. The president alone can fix it, and he should. Does it? Do, do you ever pause and think, you know, maybe this has happened before, like every single day? Peter Kirstenau, in the segment before you, pointed out that more than 4,000 African American women are separated by force from their kids every year by the U.S. government in our name because they go to jail. Right. Just like people, people, people who are facing people felony commit. charges for reentry go to jail. And <laughs> right. so right. that people doesn't seem to bother felonies. the left. Why people is that? Felonies. People who commit felonies should go to jail. People who are coming to this country no, and also, seeking asylum should not be separated from their children. No, and crossing no, no. the border if, illegally oh, is a misdemeanor, not a felony. No, no, that's not true. If you cross a second time after true. having been sent out, it is a felony. No, it's a felony, actually. That's true. Well, okay, look, look, so here's the point. Let's it, find and I'm not the even def I, I don't. We're still doing. Okay. okay. <laughs> You're wrong. Okay. But does it bother you that people busted for misdemeanors before being convicted of anything? They are innocent in the eyes of the law, are separated from their children. It happens all the time. Look, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying, it why the me. selective outrage? You never say word one about it in our name. It's immoral. You're look, a Nazi. No one look, ever says that about it happening to Americans. I'm not calling anybody a Nazi. I'm not calling anybody Good. a Nazi. What I'm saying is what's happening at the border right. is un-American. It is not who we are, and it needs to be corrected immediately. Right. Let me tell it's you something. Politically speaking, you okay. got you hit the nail on the head. This is a hot political issue, and if it doesn't change well, yeah, soon, Yeah, apparently, because whatever it takes, you guys will do. Whatever it takes. It's about power. Chris, <laughs> oh, thank you. Please.